Hey guys, I am here in Thane, Wyoming, right near my house, a couple miles away, and I'm at the, what's the name of the business? Star, Star Valley Meat Block. Star Valley Meat Block with uh, Tylee, right? Yes. Williams. And they started this, or bought this business, and are kind of transforming it. And we're going to talk to her today about what it takes to be a butcher and kind of a meat processor and seller, and so um, hopefully you'll enjoy the field trip. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Tylee. <laughs> so I guess tell us a little bit about what the business is and what made you come up with the idea to get into this. So my husband and I actually were looking to purchase a business so that we could stay in Star Valley. Um, the mining, well, I don't even really want to go into that, I guess. But mining? My husband's into mining. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the and, kids' parents are in, in the mining okay. industry. So, um it's just kind of an unpredictable business and we wanted to be in charge of our future and so we decided to take charge of it and we were looking for businesses to buy and everything led us to the meat plant <laughs> <laughs> and um, I grew up in a, a family that hunted and took care of our animals through the hunting side of things and so I had a, um, some experiment experience with doing that kind of thing and so I felt like I could do this business if this is what it was going to take for us to be able to stay here. Um, I told my husband I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been very fortunate that the mining industry is doing really well and he's still there. Okay. And so um, I'm running the business here and we process everybody's domestic animals, so pigs, goats, lambs, beef, and also everybody's game animals. And um, we really just try to help the community with 4-H, game, um, feeding families just off the family farm. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important to me is that we're feeding families. Um, it's taken a lot to learn the business. I came into it not knowing very much on the domestic side of things, but um, the previous owner stayed with me and helped me learn everything, trained me on everything, and we've actually just now gotten the business USDA inspected. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, that's going to help our local growers have a lot more outlets. They can take their animals and sell them to restaurants or grocery stores, and they actually can make more money doing that with their animals than just taking it to the feedlots or um, sales. Yeah. So the USDA is the federal government's kind of certification process to... Yes. And it took a, a long time to do. It's a really hard thing to do, so I'm pretty proud of myself for getting through <laughs> that. But um, it took about a year, and it's been a really awesome process, and I'm really excited to be able to grow the business with that. It's also going to open a lot of things for us to be able to do um, jerky or cook sausages or bacon or brats. We can sell all that stuff to grocery stores. Um, gas stations, anything that we want to do. Hmm. So it's really cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, when I, I'll tell the kids, when I used to come in here for years, it was kind of a small shop and I'd drop off, sometimes I'd drop off an elk or a deer if I didn't have time to do it myself. And But it would always, always seemed kind of small, but it seems like you're kind of growing it a little bit. Yes, it was a very small operation. Um, we've grown it tremendously it's tripled and we actually just got an expansion done on it and it's going to help um, us to be able to provide more product usually everything had to be done at the end of the day and so a lot of people were working after hours until late at night you know moving hams at one o'clock in the morning is not the most fun thing so yeah. now with the expansion we can do that all during the day it's really nice oh that is good <laughs> um so i guess talk a little bit about the learning curve for the kids you know it sounds like you just jumped into this without much experience or training and talk about uh what that's like for the kids that might want to go into a new new career like that or something so um obviously you know i had it in my heart to really make this work and so i really worked hard to make sure i do everything really well and the people that i've been learning from they do it really well and they take a lot of pride in it it's kind of crazy. Uh, meat processing is actually like an art because you're wanting to skin the hide 
off the animal to make the outside of the carcass look really nice so that when you do cut it into a steak or a roast and you package it, the person opens it up and it looks pretty. If you're chopping it up while you're skinning it, you know, it's going to have a lot of cut marks or, or not be even. And, and then same with actually processing it as far as into steaks and roasts. Um, you're wanting to make sure that you're keeping them even and making them look nice. So it's been really cool to learn that side of stuff. And yeah. then all the fun things that you can make out of the meat is, has been really awesome too. So it sounds like you're learning from the previous owners and maybe other people that you've connected, networked with. Um, what else have you used to learn? Have you like taken any classes or used the internet at all? <laughs> yeah, I use the internet a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, there is actually an association for meat processing, and so you can do trainings once a year. Um, you usually travel to Colorado or other parts of Wyoming um, and do classes that way. It's, it's always changing. There's always lots to learn, and so I've been using that to make sure and stay up on things. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so what things, I like to ask this question for the kids that are in school right now when they're grumbling like, I'm never gonna use any of this knowledge. Are there any things you learned in especially high school that maybe you're using now to start in your own business? Definitely in the math side of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we use a lot of math and- um, Hear that kids, math's important. <laughs> and of course your English, you wanna make sure you're, when you're talking with customers, you wanna be knowledgeable and talking really well <laughs> um, also, like my husband, he actually got his MBA, and we probably would not have been able to buy the business without that. Um, he was able to write up our um, business plan and run a lot of the numbers on what it entails to run this business, and you know, have, make us have an idea of how it would work and what we need to do to be able to make it profitable. Um, he's learned a lot with marketing and so there's been a lot that has come into play with owning a business. It's, yeah. it's been really fun. Sounds like a, there's a, it's not just cutting up meat, it's customer service and owning a business and marketing and all that stuff. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so do you use, uh, for the kids out there that are all into social media now, how do you use social media? Like what platforms? And stuff? We actually really enjoy social media because kind of use our family to be able to relate to people and so we actually post a lot of the stuff that we do online and then we do some advertising for what we do here as well but it all kind of comes into play together to get people involved and kind of you know be more interested in it yeah um and then it also kind of lets people know what's available here because we are changing so much um and so many people are on social media anymore that it gets the word out there yeah. and it helps with more free advertising too yeah <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> so kind of funny i d i got the idea to come down and talk to them because i follow them on instagram have you guys been snowshoeing around the last yeah. few days <laughs> and so i was like oh hey they're expanding the business uh, it'll be a cool field trip so instagram and facebook all those things work yeah. when you own a small business yes definitely <laughs> Um, okay, this has been awesome. Um, I'm gonna pause right here real quick. So guys, this is the main office. It's kind of cool. They've redecorated everything and kind of given it a rustic look. So the Star Valley meat lock, meat lock. Um, all the other computers and customer service are out here. And then this used to be, I think this is where he came into the shop, right here. Got a big old elk on the wall. Got some freezers. So is this stuff for sale? Yes. Okay, we're gonna go on a tour. Just if I if I brought an elk or a lamb in here, you'd process it and then package it and then just set it in the tray and I'd yep. pick it up and yep. pay for it. So 
you guys can see all this back in here. It's a pretty big freezer. <laughs> All the people hard at work. You're being videoed. <laughs> the school field trip. <laughs> Down over on the table over there, uh -huh. and then they bring the roast and steak right down this table where they can package them and put them in a tray here with their name on it. So the big, the big breakdown starts over there, the big pieces. Uh, and they, the there is a loin, so he's going to cut that into pork chops. Okay. And then they bring the smaller pieces over here for trimming up and packaging. Cool. And then she does all the burger stuffing and sausage stuffing over there. Okay. And they grind up burger and everything over here. There's a big old grinder. Over there. So it seems like there's kind of like a, not just a science to cutting up meat, but kind of an art to make it look nice. You kind of talked about that back yeah, there. Definitely. He's trimming off some of the fat off the pork chops because you don't want it too much fat. And then making it look really smooth and soft. So when he cuts them off, it looks nice. Okay. These are the pork chops that have on the other side of the loin. There's your pork chops. They're coming off that big old block of meat. <laughs> I don't know if you want to come in here, but <laughs> I'll film it and decide later. We're actually doing inspections. So the inspectors here today. Okay. one of our teachers, <laughs> Mrs. Romy. <laughs> that's funny. So that's Mrs. Romine's ham. <laughs> and then, so this is like for their aging. These beans have done, been done last week or the week before. So they're getting ready to get cut up. So, <clears throat> so the, the animals hang in here and they age and what does the aging do? The aging breaks down the proteins to help make the meat more tender and make the flavor even more pronounced. Okay. Um, we usually watch the beef really close. Grass finished beef sometimes don't have as much fat. And if it ages, it starts making a really hard layer on the outside and it goes into the meat. So you have to trim more meat. You have a bigger loss. So we watch those really close. If it has a lot of fat, we can let them age longer. Okay. What are these smaller animals? Lambs. These are lambs. So we've got some lambs hanging there. And then just a bunch of beef cows. And how long do you let them hang and age in here? 10 to 14 days. Okay. Okay. You, you can age meat. The butchers will age it for a couple of weeks, but sometimes people at home will age it for a long time. So my brother-in-law just aged some meat for like two months. And he had to trim a lot of it away, but he said it was the most tender, delicious meat he'd ever had. Yes, we have the dry agers in the front office that we just bought with the expansion. And we will age those anywhere between 30 to 120 days. 
and it does. It breaks down that protein, and it's just delicious. That's You'll awesome. Have to try one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, cool. Okay. So, what is this thing? This is our smoker. So the old smoker that we used to have, that was the one that we had to do it. One o'clock in the morning, come and change hands. And <laughs> <laughs> this one actually does everything all by itself. It shuts um, off when the product meets, meets the right temperature. And so you, really nice. you just load them in this side? Yes. So there's this big door, giant smoker. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nice. You can just let it sit and smoke. <laughs> Anything final you want to say to the kids at the end of the tour? I think that this is a really good profession to go into. Um, it's something that everybody's going to need now and in the future. Uh -huh. and, um, it's really a work of art. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It looks like you guys have done an incredible job here. So, um, Well, I'd like to thank Tylee, right? Mm -hmm. um, Williams here at Star Valley Meat Block. Um, kind of a cool thing. I mean, they took over a business that... Um, and then have expanded it with really no background in that area. So you can kind of do whatever you want in life. That's the cool thing about living in America is you get to pick whatever business or career you want and make it happen. So, okay. Thanks, Tyler. Thank Sally. you. Mm -hmm. We're buying this footage to this field trip. This is the Alpine, Wyoming elk refuge. Not elk refuge, but feed grounds. And you can see There's hundreds of elk here. Smells. It's at the north end of Star Valley. And these elk pull in from Idaho. Not too many from Idaho. I think most of them come from this Wyoming Salt River Range, but just the other side of the highway here is Idaho. So some of them pull in. Pull in. You can see some of them have blue colors, like this one right here. And those are, I believe those are GPS radio collars. Um, so they can track the elk over the course of the year and just kind of see what their habits are, like where they bed down and where they um, spend the summers and the fall and where they go during the winter. I just missed it, but those two small bulls there were kind of cracking their antlers together. Sometimes they still have that little bit of an instinct. Yeah, there they go. A little bit of an instinct to... I don't know if it's play or if it's just kind of, in the fall, they'll truly fight each other for um, the rights to... Um, not the rights, but the... Uh, for control of the cows and the herd. So you can see them all scattered out here. There's sometimes there's really big bulls in there. And right on that edge right there, back in the very back, there's a whole series of bulls and they're kind of bigger. They're just kind of in there, what they call a little bachelor herd. Anyway, I thought you'd think that was interesting. And that's kind of a closure to this field trip. So I hope you enjoyed it. And that's all I got. <laughs>